Hey folks, James Brandon here, and I want to show you a few of the things that I love about the new Perfect Photo Suite 7 uh, from On One Software. So these images right here are one of the first uh, new editions of the uh, Perfect Photo Suite 7, because in previous editions, you couldn't uh, reference entire folders of images. You just have to go to Lightroom or um, Photoshop or, you know, just a, a folder on your computer and then take it into an individual program or perfect layers and edit it. Whereas now I can reference an entire folder and then scroll through the images to choose the one that I want. And I've already picked one out here. This is of my son, Isaac. Uh, he is about four months old at the time of uh, recording this video. And in the background there is his great grandma from uh, California. She came over to visit and um, she of course fell in love with Isaac and they had a great time together. So I took a few photos uh, while she was holding him one day, and he uh, gave me this little look here. So uh, I wanted to convert this to black and white using um, another new feature from On One, another new program rather, uh, Perfect Black and White. So one of the other cool and new features of this program is that it's all in one nice tight little package here um, in Perfect Photo Suite 7. So I have layers, I have mask, portrait effects, black and white, focus, and resize all in one. So if I want to jump over to perfect black and white, I just click it. One click, and it takes that image over to perfect black and white. So from here, I have a few different options. Over here on the left, I can go to effects, and you see the different folders here. So I let's just choose one of these, hints of color. And instead of showing uh, some stock photography of you know, different images with different effects on them. It's actually referencing my image and showing what my image will look like with that effect on it already. So I don't have to guess and I don't have to waste my time double clicking, you know, hundreds of different effects to see what looks best. I can see it right here. Um, I don't want to use an effect right here. What I want to do is just kind of go through this on my own. So I'll come over here to the right hand side and you have a choice of three different options up here at the top right. So I'm gonna bring up my histogram so I can take a look at that and see what it looks like. So I'll brighten this image up a bit. I really wanna bring the contrast up and uh, make, it, make it pop a bit. Bring my highlights up to uh, bring them back on the face a little bit there. And just get it to where it looks good. And bring the shadows in, try to get that histogram under control a little bit. And this is always just a constant, you know, back and forth, uh, just trying to get it to look right. Bring the image, uh, the detail up a little bit. You can, of course, um, do selective edits with your black and white image down here in color response. So if I want to just affect the yellow channels, I can do that. That's probably going to grab his shirt there. I can make that brighter, darker. And you can go through the whole image and, and you know, spend time on that if you'd like to. Uh, you have a tone curve, which is a nice addition. Uh, this is kind of what, what you'd find in Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, and you can always just drag that to add contrast. You can drag that down to make your black stronger up there. Or come up here and pull it up to make your white stronger. And uh, I think I'd like to add some film grain to this. Sorry, my external hard drive disconnected there. Um, to add film grain, you just switch that module on. And then you have a lot of different film types to choose from. So you, as, as you hover over each, each of these options, you'll see a preview of the film grain. So I saw one there that had quite a bit. So let's choose this. All right, and then we can bring the amount up as much as we want, or bring the size of the grain up as much as we want here. Uh, let's see, get it to about right there. I'm not sure if you can even, even see that on here on this resolution, but it's there. Um, you can also do toner here, and this is kind of like split toning in Lightroom. So if I turn that on, you can see that it'll bring up uh, this nice antique split tone. Um, this is one thing that Lightroom doesn't have is, is presets just for split tone. Now that doesn't mean that you can't save uh, a preset out that just has uh, split toning changes made to it. But here I'm in this module and I have the presets readily available that only affect split tone, which is nice. 
So I can add those if I want to. Um, I can, you can see the paper highlights and the silver shadows. I can bring those down uh, and just get it to where I want it to. I can bring them all the way back and completely remove that. Um, whatever you want to do. You can add a vignette, uh, make it darker around the edges. You can uh, adjust those pretty much like you can in Lightroom. Bring the edges in, uh, affect the size of it, the amount of feather. Um, you know, you can so you can get that on the extreme end, or this on the other extreme where you can't even hardly tell. So you just want to kind of find a good place in the middle there. So change the roundness a bit, uh, bring the brightness back. And, Probably somewhere just like that. I can also add a border here if I wanted to. I won't do that here. Um, I can add a blend mode if I wanted to. This is a really cool feature. So you could just you know add like a screen and then bring the opacity back. Um, but we're not going to do that here. All right, and from here you'd basically be done in black and white. Um, if you want to go any further, that's one of the other great things about Perfect Photo Suite is that from black and white, I can jump over here to, let's say, uh, focus, which is uh, focal point two. And let's just see how long it takes for that to, to launch. It shouldn't be too long. And it'll just take my finished black and white image straight into focal point. And the first thing I always do in focal point is just come up here to edit and reset all, which takes me back to the, the standard uh, shape and size here. So I'll just place this over his head to get started, uh, make it a little bit larger on both sides. And obviously you can see that it's way, way too extreme right now. So I'll usually come over here to the right side, go to my blur, take that down to, I like to sit somewhere between uh, zero and 10 usually. That makes it a very subtle change and subtlety is really, uh, really key to these, these filters here. So you can bring up the optic quality, which will change the quality of the image uh, in the blurred areas. And that's probably all I wanna do there, bring up the feather a little bit, all right. So I can apply that. And when I apply that, it should take me back to layers, just like that. And that's really it. So from here, I could just save this image out and it would save to my computer. Or if I had exported from Lightroom, uh, I could save it. It would export back to my computer and then the change should show up in Lightroom from there. So um, this is really just a very small sampling of what this, uh, what this program can do. I can uh, go from layers back to black and white if I don't you know, see enough contrast there and I can just you know, throw a little bit more on, on there. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention was presets. Um, when you have all your changes that you wanna make over here in the right side, if you wanna add that as a preset, you can. And to do that, you just hit sh uh, Shift Command S or you can come up here to presets and save the preset. So I already have a category or a folder here uh, for my black and white presets, but from here I could just add a name. So I could call this um, something like high uh, contrast black and white uh, film grain. So that's uh, you know very short and to the point. It says exactly what the preset does. I can come down here to creator, drop my name in there, and then I can add a description like a, uh, a high contrast uh, black and white filter with uh, just the right amount of film grain to finish the image off. And then from there I would just create it and that's it. And then I can always just reference that again by coming over here to my presets. And there you see my folder and there you see the, uh, the presets that I've created. So I hope, uh, hope you've been able to see some of the advantages uh, and some of the great things in the new Perfect Photo Suite 7. Uh, that's really just scratching the surface, like I said. I didn't even get into all the new brushes over here on the left. You can uh, use these brushes to selectively edit your image. You can come over here to um, the Lighten mode 
and make your brush a little bit bigger, um, the, change the feather amount, and then you can just paint over a selected area uh, to brighten it up. And it has the perfect mask included, so it's gonna just select the face or that portion of the image that you're editing, and it's gonna try it and do its best just to mask that section right there. So obviously that's not a good change for this individual photo, but that can be used in a lot of different situations. So if you don't, if you think that's too much, you can always bring the amount back and then try it again and see how that looks. So, all right, uh, hope that helps and I will see y'all later. Bye.